gonna do this without the sweater. It's so cold today. Now we're gonna do the sweater. Ugh. Hello everybody and welcome to my first cosplay store time of the new year! Yay! Wow, I'm so excited! This year to start off the new year, I'm gonna be telling you guys the story of my very cringy CBC interview. I was 14 years old and it was embarrassing. <laughs> Which is why I'm telling it to you guys, so you can marvel and my amazing teenage cringiness. So for my non-Canadian viewers, uh, the CBC stands for Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. It is a publicly funded news and entertainment source and they mainly put out content through radio and through TV. So like if you're American, I guess the, the close equivalent would probably be like NPR or PBS. It's, it's basically the same kind of thing. Kind of a big deal and it's something that I grew up very much with. Like growing up, my parents were always playing the radio so I grew up listening to all of the different CBC radio shows and it's just like a really close to my heart ingrained part of my upbringing. And I'm sure it's the same for a lot of other Canadian children. There's some background which is going to be relevant to the story and is going to help things make a lot more sense. So flashback to my third ever convention which was Anime Evolution 2010. Anime Evolution is pretty much a dead convention now but it used to be one of the biggest conventions on the west coast, certainly on the west coast of Canada, certainly in Vancouver. It was like this massive convention and it was my second ever anime convention, my first huge convention. I'd only ever been to really small ones back then. Uh, I was 14 years old. It was my first year cosplaying. My mom and I worked super hard to put together a Maka Albarn cosplay for me. I was very proud of it, very excited. So I showed up to this convention and I didn't have anybody to hang out with. I had friends that I had met at like previous conventions and some of them were there at the convention but I didn't make an effort to try and like set anything up with them because I thought that I would just run into them at the convention because like again I had only ever been to small cons and that was a very common thing to just like run into people you knew and then just hang up from there. So I thought this was going to be the same thing, but at a big convention, it is like a thousand times harder to find people who you know and just like bump into people. So I ended up being a total loner. I was just kind of like hanging out by myself in my Maka cosplay. I basically like walked around, I explored, and I eventually came across this cameraman from the CBC. And I saw him interviewing this huge group of Degray Men cosplayers and he was like, this is for CBC television, you know, say this to the camera and like say this to the camera as a group. And so I am immediately like, oh my goodness, CBC, this is my moment. <laughs> I was young. I thought I was like an amazing cosplayer and I was like, oh man, I need to be on TV. This man has to put me on TV. I grew up immersed in the CBC. This is like, this is meant to be, this has to happen. Oh. I'm like sitting there watching this happen and he finishes filming those people and then he's walking around that area looking for other people to interview. So he goes up to like other people and I watch him interview all these people and I'm basically sitting there waiting for him to notice me and interview me. And so cringy to think back to that. Oh my goodness, why were you like this? I'm just waiting because I'm like, oh my gosh, he's gonna see my cosplay, he's gonna think that's like really cool because I have this big scythe and he's totally gonna ask to interview me. Uh, he starts wandering away, so he doesn't see me obviously, or maybe he sees me and doesn't want to interview me, which is totally fine, but in my 14 year old mind I'm like, no I have to be on CBC. No you don't, you don't, just let the poor man do his job. So what I did, cause I was like really shy, but I like super wanted to be on CBC television, was I started like subtly like following this guy. So he would walk to another part outside the convention and I'd be like sitting on a rock or something and then I'd like wait and then I'd like subtly like walk over to that same area and like sit somewhere else and like perch myself there and kind of like pretend like, oh, I just happen to want to sit on this different rock near where you're filming. Casual, just act casual and natural. I actually did this, I can't like, I think back and it's just like the cringiest thing. And like, I remember my entire thought process being like, wow, my cosplay is really great. I love this ABC. This is like my destiny. He's totally gonna notice me. He's totally gonna wanna interview me. So I'm just gonna like subtly follow this poor, this poor man. Just let him do his job. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I do this like about three-ish times where I'm like subtly trying to like put myself in like his line of views so like he notices me and then this is so cringy, guys. I hate this so much, reliving this. So eventually, I'm just sitting on a rock, pretending to like, oh, just, 
I'm just just chilling here on this rock. <laughs> Nothing going on. <laughs> Eventually he notices and he turns to me, he's very nice. And he's like, hey, would you like to be interviewed for CBC? And I'm like, oh, me? <laughs> like, actually, oh, I'm that surprise. Like, oh my goodness, what a surprise. You want me to be on, me? <laughs> this awkward small child just, oh, me? You want me to be, oh my gosh, like, so it, this is like something out of a sitcom, legit, like, so bad like that's actually how it happened I'm like oh yeah that would be awesome um here's the thing like I really think the guy knew what I was doing I think I tried to be subtle but I am like looking back and like thinking back to like his body language and everything like I feel like he knew what I was doing he was like okay fine I'll just like interview this kid because she's obviously following me to try me on TV and I'll just film her, and we don't even have to use the footage, but I'll get her to stop this kid perching herself on these various rocks and benches, you know, as I'm filming. So bad. So he's like, hey, yeah, okay, cool. I'll, I'll, I'll interview you for CBC. And I'm like, oh my goodness, like, wow, that's super cool. I was very shy and awkward though. That This is the thing, like you do have to understand small, awkward child who just like really wanted to be on CBC. So he has me like stand in front of the camera. And if you've ever been interviewed for the news, they always have you spell out your name for the camera and then say your name. So he had me do this with my characters. So I'm like, I'm, I'm Anya, I'm crossing like Mac Alvin from Soul Eater, A-N-Y-A, and then M-A-K-A-A, -A -A -A. like it's so, it was so bad. And he's like, okay, cool, why did you choose Maka? And I literally am like, oh, it's really cool that she's such a strong female character and that like, she's pretty well covered. Like I said something along those lines and what I meant was that like, she isn't like, in a super revealing costume. She has like a very modest costume and she's not like the super sexy hero. Like she's just like this young girl, she's very badass and you know, she's not like super sexualized and everything. Which would have been like a nice way to phrase it, but I'm like, oh, she's well covered, which is awesome. <laughs> like the most like uneloquent way of saying that. I literally, I'm like, oh, and you know, it's so rare to find a character who's so covered, like something along those lines. What I was trying to say was okay, but the way that I went about it, like, all of my eloquence just like left me. I was so I think high on adrenaline, you know, being on camera that I just like could not remember what I would want to say and I just like could not phrase myself well. I was this shy 14 year old, so you know, that didn't help either. And like while he's asking these questions, you can tell he's rushing through it. Like he does not want to be there. Cause like he starts off, he's like, okay. And like, what character are you? And he's like, okay. So like, you know, why this character? And like, okay, why do you like anime? Like he's literally talking like that. Like he's trying to rush it so that it will be over. So then he also asks me like, why do you like anime? Why do you think it's so popular? And I completely stumble through the answer. And at the end I was like, I think it's just a really good social. And I couldn't think of the words. So there's this awkward silence. I'm like, I think it's a really good social prompt which like was not the word i was looking for it was the closest one that i could come up with even in that moment i was just like this is bad this is terrible this cannot go on tv <laughs> what i meant was that, like it's a good topic of conversation you know among like-minded people right like talking about anime you can have some really interesting conversations with people about anime and like the storylines and the philosophies that are communicated through those but obviously age 14 on the spot really shy really small, could not phrase herself like that. So I say that I think that anime is a good social prompt. And I can tell by looking at the guy that like, he's not putting that on TV. I know that they're bad and he knows that they're bad. And like, he knows that I followed him around just to try and put me on TV. And then this is what he gets. These are terrible answers. <sighs> so then he thanks me and he leaves and I go on my way and I'm like, wow, my opportunity to be on CBC and I did a terrible job. And then after the convention, I actually did try and find the news article. I had no luck, which was probably for the best. Even if that segment did manage to like get on CBC either on their website or like, you know, on actual broadcast, there's like a 97% chance that none of my footage is in there. Part of me kind of wants that footage to exist somewhere out there so that I can watch it and just like see how bad it was. Cause like in my mind, it was terrible. Like at the time, looking back, I think it was terrible, but maybe it wasn't. It either is as terrible or worse than what I imagine, or maybe it's not that bad, but it probably is 
is pretty bad. I do love the CBC. I'd love to have an opportunity to like somehow collaborate with the CBC in one form or another, but I don't want it to be like that. I don't want that to be my collaboration with the CBC. <laughs> Cause that's just so bad. CBC is such a huge part of my childhood. Like, I can't even tell you guys. CBC Radio, oh my goodness. If there are any other Canadian kids watching, let me know if you grew up listening to CBC Radio. My favorites were Wiretap. Love Wiretap with Jonathan Goldstein. So good. And then I really loved Go, which was the Saturday morning variety show, I guess, the variety radio show. It was awesome. Definitely not the opera. So good. Those are probably my three favorites. Really loved those, but. Anyway, please don't follow people around in the hopes that they'll interview you. Either just be bold about it and be like, hey, you're with CBC, I love CBC, would it be cool if you interviewed me? Or, you know, if they pass you by and they don't show any interest in interviewing you, just let them go. Let the poor cameraman do his job. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. This is my first Cosplay Story Time of 2019. I will see you guys all next time. Until then, fan bases, please be sure to take care. Bye. <laughs>